In this session we're going to look at assessing the delays of packets through a Palo Alto firewall using Wireshark and Workbench. Now I should wind back a bit really and explain the symptom. The Advanced 7 team were investigating a performance problem. So we have users uh, accessing systems using um, a VDI desktop delivered to them by the uh, ESX host on the left hand side and they're accessing among other things a web application which you see in another ESX host on the right hand side of this diagram. Between the two we have, a, have an F5 load balancer and a Palo Alto firewall. Now the Users were suffering from slow response times and intermittent disconnections from the web application. We managed to capture two traces. One was captured between the F5 and the firewall using dump cap and the other used TCP dump running in the uh, Linux host actually, the Linux VM that was running the web application. Okay, so that's our configuration. The capture ran for some time and produced a lot of uh, trace files, so let's look at how we handle those trace files. So here in Workbench I'm going to load up the workspace that has all of the trace files in it. And you can see that we have the trace files that were captured on the Linux server. And we also have the trace files that were captured uh, between the F5 and the firewall. Now my colleagues at Advanced 7 started by looking through some trace files at certain periods of time to find slow response times and they picked on one particular TCP connection. Once they had the details for that connection they then filtered all of the trace files just to pull out the data associated with that single connection. Now that single connection used a client port number of 51111. So to filter the traffic they simply took the whole file set and then dropped the filter tool onto the file set and entered the expression, the filter expression TCP port equals 51111 and then ran the filter. I'm not going to do that because we've already done that and it takes some time to uh, work through all of that so we'll skip that bit and um, the same was done with the server traces here and so that gave us these two traces these are the filtered versions of the traces and there's a further complication with the uh, server trace if we just open that up in Wireshark um, what we find is that it's actually been recorded in a particular format. Now you can see here that the header says that it's a Linux cooked capture. So it hasn't got a typical Ethernet version 2 or even 802.3 frame header. It has this uh, rather unique header. Now that is something that you can get depending on how you specify the TCP dump capture on the Linux host. Um, so we needed to convert this back to Ethernet version 2 because uh, we wanted to use the Workbench Matcher tool and Matcher doesn't support this uh, cooked format uh, right now. So what we did was we used uh, Trace Wrangler and Trace Wrangler has the ability to uncook um, these cooked formats. So that's why we have this particular trace file here. Anyway, let's move on to the actual matching. So we take the uh, F5 trace and we take the uncooked server trace, do a basic match and simply run a match. And Workbench is just scanning through the files and matching the packets end to end based on a, a fairly straightforward set of criteria because this is uh, uh, the packets each end don't go through any form of transformation or anything. So that gives us this match grid down here um, and you can see we've matched up lots of lots and lots of packets. So now I'm going to enable this feature called Synchro and simply click on a frame. 
As you can see, Workbench has started two copies of Wireshark, one for each trace, uh, one for the F5 filtered trace and one for the uncooked server trace. So let's just make a few changes to the layout here. So a couple of thing, a couple of things to note here. The first thing is that if you look at this top trace, we've got uh, sin here, but the sin ac comes sometime later. It's out of order, uh, and yet in the other trace, you can see that it's in the correct order. Um, I covered this in another video about these out of order packets. I'm not going to bother to try to correct this one at the moment because this doesn't actually affect uh, what I'm trying to show here. So the next thing that's strange is that if we look at uh, this packet here, which is the first uh, data packet going from the um, browser running in the VDI desktop towards the application server, you can see that the response time for that request is 2.9 seconds. And you can see that most of that is made up of response spread. So what that means is that 2.8 plus seconds was spent transmitting the response to the request, transmitting it from the web server to back to the browser running in the VDI desktop. Now that's a really big number, um, I'm sure you can appreciate. Typically when we see delays, we might see a slow page time, which would show up as a, a slow service time. But slow response spreads like this are not common. So we have obviously have something wrong with the transmission of the data from the web application back to the browser in the VDI desktop. My colleagues who were looking at this at Advanced 7 added this additional column, round trip time to ACK. Now this is the time between a data packet going from the web application to the browser and then seeing an acknowledgement for that data packet. So quickly, let's cover how we get the round trip to ACK time. Uh, if we just expand out the TCP header and go down to the SEQ sequence number and acknowledgement analysis, we get this value here. The RTT to ACK, uh, this, this segment was, and that's where that value comes from. So what we do is simply right click, apply that as a column, and then because it had a long uh, header um, label, I actually just edited the header label by right clicking here and doing edit column and then change the wording over here on the left. So that's how we get that value there. I think that um, that was uh, the idea of uh, the Advanced 7 guys, pretty inspired I thought that that's a really useful value for this purpose of looking at the transmission performance from the web application back to the browser. So let's have a look at the, uh, these values as we go down through the file. Now, I'm using Synchro here, so this uh, bottom window is tracking the top one. Um, as we move through the uh, F5 trace, the server one is tracking. Now, if we keep an eye down here um, in these uh, server ones, as we move down through this, you'll see that uh, things become quite worrying. We're already seeing an increase in this round time to ACK. It was, uh, you know, around the uh, sub millisecond mark up here. We've got sub milliseconds. Then we're into the tens of milliseconds. And then as we keep moving down through here, we find that now we're up to 118 milliseconds, which is obviously, uh, that's quite a high value. Now I'm going to focus on this particular one. We see here we have uh, a round trip time to ACK of less than a millisecond as seen at the F5. But if we look on the other side of the firewall at, what, at the value that's seen at the server, we see 118.1 milliseconds. So 118 milliseconds more than we see um, actually between the F5 and the firewall. So let's just put that into context. This is what we're seeing. We're seeing data coming back from the web application um, 
it's uh, then arriving. Uh, so we see the timestamp of it leaving the web application. We then see the timestamp of it arriving at the uh, trace point here between the F5 and the firewall. We see a very quick ACK come back in 0.1 milliseconds. And that ACK should just pass straight through the firewall and we should see uh, the time between the data here and the ACK here being something very similar to 0.1 milliseconds. But instead we see 118 milliseconds. So we're obviously seeing a very big delay happening here in this firewall. And if we keep looking down through this trace, what we find is we see uh, large numbers, 121 milliseconds now. And eventually, as we move down through the trace, we start to see other problems where uh, the values of these uh, acknowledgements, the delays in these acknowledgements are getting so large that we then start to get into the area of dupax and retransmissions. So obviously, nice big block of uh, dupax there. So obviously we have some sort of issue um, in this area um, and using this trace data it was quite obvious that the problem was somewhere in that firewall. So let's just wind forward and look at the next steps that um, the uh, Advanced 7 guys took. So what they did was they asked for the uh, CPU utilisation during this period of this trace, the CPU on the firewall that is. And this is what they saw. Now, this looks like bursts of activity and then long quiet periods. But actually, as my, as my colleagues have noted down here, utilization of zero represents no data. So what they're saying there is that the reason we have these periods here with uh, seem seemingly zero utilization is actually because the firewall was so busy it couldn't record the CPU uh, utilization statistics. And so what happened was that the customer reorganized um, some areas of the network and changed the traffic patterns, reduced the load on the firewall and thereby eliminated the uh, delays across the firewall and the loss of packets. So I hope you found that useful and uh, I'll catch you next time.